the city's budget is incredibly complex and today is the initial uh, preview really of the mayor's proposed budget. I say preview because it now with the decisions, initial decisions made, it now gets loaded into the financial actual accounting system for the city. I officially present it on May 16th, and then the council, uh, we have a public hearing on it May 17th, am I getting this right? Mm -hmm. And then the council votes on it uh, at the end of the month, at which point it moves from being the mayor's proposed budget to the approved budget. There's one more vote after that, which is called the adopted budget. Prosperous, healthy, educated, and equitable. Last week, the Portland City Council officially adopted these four goals for the city of Portland. The mayor's proposed budget that I'm previewing here today seeks to invest in achieving those four interlocking goals. To help businesses create jobs, to boost family incomes, to keep people safer and healthy, to maintain the very important momentum, positive momentum in local education reforms, seeing more eighth graders graduating from high school countywide, and by laying the groundwork and providing resources for action towards a more equitable Portland. Some of the biggest decisions in this budget are to cut deeply in administrative services and to put more of those resources out into the community. For example, uh, it is absolutely important to the health of this city that it be safe. And this budget um, makes no cuts to fire or police sworn personnel. The requested budget came in with just over 100 uh, proposed cuts divided between police and fire. With fire now delivering over 54,000 health-related rescue calls, this is no time to be cutting back on those services. With the police bureau seeking to get on top of a virulent and just horrible gang violence in the community, now is no time to be cutting sworn officer positions. Uh, with, uh, as I mentioned, with some really important and newfound momentum in seeing that more of Portland's kids are graduating from high school, now is no time to have the kinds of teacher layoffs that the current financial, uh, financial conditions of the state and the city might otherwise require. And this city, unlike other cities on the west coast, is becoming more disparate in terms of the prosperity and ed educational achievement between white and non-white Portlanders, and we intend to do something about that. The Portland economy continues to grow, albeit by rates well below what we would expect in an economic recovery. We're on par with most large cities across the country and far outperforming the rest of Oregon. Although that says more about the lack of growth in the rest of Oregon than it does about ourselves. Uh, the city of Portland is growing, but relative to our historical growth rates, we're still subpar, especially given the recession that we just had. In particular, housing-related industries and government are providing large drags on the economic situation that we see locally and nationally. Overall, there are only minor changes to the revenue forecast and financial forecast for the city. Largely, business license taxes account for almost all the changes. We did see an uptick in business license taxes that were paid this year, and that fed into the forecast for 12-13 and beyond. Essentially, we had some other offsetting revenue changes that, that resulted in, in very modest changes, generally positive. Uh, we did realize some savings from the cost of living increases uh, that are related to uh, the city's inflation rate. Um, it came in lower than we had anticipated in December. We also are now expecting less, lower costs for health insurance premiums. Those savings were offset by now a higher expected PERS rate increases beginning in 13-14 based on advisory rates that uh, the public employee retirement system gave us just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so essentially, I guess, uh, we're a little bit better than we were in December, but the cities, the local, national, and international economies remain very vulnerable. There are many risks at play, um, but I think we're on, uh, to get the budget on a sustainable path, we're going to have to cut a little under $15 million in ongoing expenses. 
Uh, thank you. It's good to uh, good to be here in front of you today. Um, as the mayor discussed, this is the stage of the process. We talk about the specifics uh, actions that the mayor is taking to balance this year's budget. Uh, this has been a difficult process, and at the beginning of the process, we asked bureaus to develop packages, cut packages of four, six, and eight percent uh, reductions. Uh, again, this is significantly difficult, but was a critical step that bureaus took in getting us to uh, the point where we are today. A few of the specifics of the budget uh, that you'll see, as uh, Josh mentioned, his forecast shows about $400 million in general fund resources for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, but it's important to note that because we balance over a five-year forecast, about $4.9 million of that needs to be reserved for future years. Of the remaining $395 million, only about $381 million of those represent ongoing resources, which is why the general fund needs to cut about $14.7 million. Uh, we believe uh, that this is the uh, right action to keep the city on sustainable path over the entire year forecast. Uh, the forecast also includes about $13.4 million in one-time resources, which will also be discussed as part of this budget presentation. Uh, to tell you where we're going next, over the next 10 days, the staff will be working to translate these packages into a proposed budget document, which will be delivered to council on May 16th. As this schedule continues to play out, uh, the council acting as the budget committee will hold a public budget hearing on May 17th and they're scheduled to approve the budget on May 30th. Uh, and finally, the council uh, is scheduled to adopt the, the final budget which is going into effect for next year on June 21st. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the stage of the process where uh, we're dealing with the overview uh, information and we'll be giving you much more of the detailed information as it plays out over the next, uh, next 10 days. So a uh, couple of other uh, upfront decisions that I made in terms of the city's uh, fiscal fundamentals. Um, there has been some suggestion that the city should tap its general fund reserve uh, to make uh, priority investments. Um, I have rejected uh, that idea. Uh, now is uh, for all the reasons that you heard from Josh and that Portland families are living out every day, now is not the time to put the city's credit uh, rating which is very very positive very solid very high now is not the time to put that credit rating at, at risk by going into the general fund reserve I do not do that um, the uh, the other uh, general uh, the other sort of general approach to this budget has been to cut administration uh, to streamline overhead based on uh, requested budgets submitted earlier this year and with these trims to overhead and administration to invest those in frontline services. For example, the Office of Management and Finance, uh, which is the central service uh, bureau of the city, department of the city, takes a 8% reduction. Uh, but I also propose re reductions in overhead within the bureaus themselves. And you can see that even in police and fire, I cut uh, back office operations so that their own budgets are making a contribution to preserve those sworn firefighters and sworn police officers. We've also looked at uh, opportunities to trim overhead administration and bringing down the utility uh, rate increases that were proposed earlier this year, requested earlier this year by bureaus. The Water Bureau requested an 11% increase for this year and I'm proposing an 8.1% increase. The Bureau of Environmental Services asked for a 5.9% increase, and I'm proposing a 5.35% increase. The other thing I would say is, um, and you can ask more questions of Josh or Rich or others on the team, is the uh, impacts to governments that rely on property tax proceeds those impacts are going to last into uh, the years and potentially the decades ahead. Uh, this is the first time since the passage of me, knock things around. This is the first time since the passage of the property tax limitations in the 90s where property ta where property valuations are now down about or bouncing around about the same place that assessed values um, uh, are noted uh, on the assessor's rolls, and what that means is um, that property taxes are not going to rebound anytime soon and therefore whether you're a school district, the state government, uh, whether you're a city government or county government, 
um, that's going to continue to uh, be a challenge, a revenue challenge. I want to start with uh, a discussion of uh, education among prosperity, health, education, and equity. Um, it has been uh, many years since we have seen the kind of improvement in the high school graduation rate uh, that we saw and what that was announced earlier this year. It is a hard-fought, hard-won improvement in the high school graduation rate. A uh, 10% increase in high school graduation rates um, is, is, was common for the class of 2011. Uh, that is the first class that has gotten through four or five years of local education reform. And now is not the time to uh, reduce the teaching staff of our schools uh, and lose this momentum. So we have overcut the city's budget in places to come up with $7 million, about $7.5 million in one-time resources. Uh, a half a million dollars of that will come from the Portland Development Commission uh, for the purchase of property uh, with Portland Public Schools. And for example, the Foster Elementary School is something uh, that is under discussion. Uh, opportunities to lease land from the school district for more community gardens on school sites. Uh, those are under discussion as well. And then all the school districts within the city of Portland would get their proportional share. Um, I'd like to ask the superintendents to, and, and also the president of the Portland Teachers Association, maybe starting uh, with Carol, uh, to come forward and say a few words. Um, we, uh, we work together on this. Uh, our money has been matched by uh, contributions made, uh, savings that have been made. Uh, in the central administrative functions of Portland Public Schools and also by uh, reductions in compensation and benefits for teachers themselves. So this has very much been a partnership. So Superintendent Smith. Thank you, Mayor Adams. And I think the main thing I want to do is just to thank the mayor, thank the council, and thank our Teachers Association. Um, it, it has indeed been an incredibly collaborative process to work together to figure out how we prevented laying off 110 teachers from our school district and also maintain a full school year um, in a time when all of our budgets are significantly constrained. So this was not a moment that the city had more money to work with, but a moment where all of us went back and have our uh, shared sacrifices amongst all of our employees um, and significant adjustments to how we're spending our resources in order to save the school year for kids and to have teachers in front of our kids. So I cannot uh, express enough my appreciation for everyone who came to the table and worked to find creative solutions, um, and that work will continue. Um, but it has been a, a testament to Portland and to um, our leadership that we were able to get to a moment where we could preserve teachers in front of kids and a school year. So, and we're getting lots of thanks from our parents and our students for, for doing this work. Hello there. Um I am not normally in this position. I am normally a teacher in front of kids, and so uh, this is a unique experience for me as uh, the teacher that represents teachers. But what I can say is this move um, by the city, what it means to our kids um, is immense. I have been in classrooms that the rooms are so full of kids that they're already overcrowded. There's not enough desks to even fit in a room. And the idea of cutting more, uh, where do you go from there? So the idea of cutting days, knowing full well that some of our most vulnerable kids <coughs> wouldn't have breakfast or lunch, and they wouldn't have a safe place to go. Those are some of the things that we grapple with when we're trying to figure out these really hard situations. Uh, getting calls and emails from parents, and I myself uh, am a parent of two kids in, in Portland Public. Um, I know what those cuts were looking like. Cutting your halftime music person, cutting your PE uh, teacher, cutting T regular general ed teachers to the point that class sizes would just grow so much you don't know what to do. So this means an awful lot, means an awful lot to our kids, um, our parents, and I think to um, 
to the whole city what we can uh, somehow we need to come together and create a sustainable solution. So I applaud and thank very much the mayor and the city and the district. We've, we've been working together and really trying hard to do what is best for kids. So thank you. Thank you. Like uh, Superintendent Smith, I especially want to thank the mayor, his staff, and Portland Public, everybody involved in this initiative to invest in our children. Uh, just some true stories. Uh, in the last two years, the David Douglas School District has eliminated 102 teaching positions, which is 16% of our teaching staff, approximately 50 classified positions, which is 13% of our classified staff and about 13% of our administrative supervisory staff. So this initiative will allow us to retain and restore some direct services to students. Also, I want to uh, thank the mayor and his staff for ensuring that there is equity across the city of Portland. Uh, these are all of our kids, all of our students. There's going to be some very happy students, kids, and I think that uh, we are truly making an investment in the future of Portland. Thank you. In addition to the uh, 7.5 million that will go to uh, Portland schools, uh, we are also, um, there was a cut proposed for the Sun Schools uh, uh, through the Par Bureau of Parks and Recreation. I have restored that cut. We continue the funding for the Sun School program at David Douglas High School at $100,000. Um, and we continue our support for the all hands raised uh, cradle to career strategy, the right brain initiative arts education program and you have a list of, of more details I'm just sitting uh, hitting some of the highlights um, next I'd like to uh, focus on the budget as it relates to uh, prosperity uh, the Portland Development Commission uh, their budget um, they were able to carry forward some unspent resources uh, from last year that combined with uh, resources that are contained in the proposed budget uh, allows for their work uh, to move forward, whether it's the Neighborhood Prosperity Initiative that we in, uh, the council approved last month, or the continued work on doubling our exports in the next five years um, in our cluster industries. We also add uh, 16 FTEs uh, to the Bureau of Development Services. Uh, the construction economy is picking up and we also as part of the addition of staff to the Bureau of Development Services fund more inspectors for housing to try to get on top of our backlog of nuisances uh, including abandoned uh, houses. Let's see, um, our, uh, the, the Bureau of Housing uh, led by Commissioner Fish, I'm proposing 4.1 million uh, in funding, that's one-time funding. We use one-time funding uh, over multiple years as opposed to going into the reserve uh, to fund this program. And we hope uh, his advocacy at the state level uh, to also supplement this funding with uh, a, the, the allocation of the state settlement on illegal foreclosures. It'll run through the state. Um, we believe it'll show up in the next fiscal year so that uh, there, there is a robust uh, affordable housing program and services to homeless folks and the folks that are, have been hit hardest by the recession and are suffering the most in this slow recovery. Uh, in terms of the, the healthy of the four goals, I mentioned that the Portland Police Bureau uh, reversed all the cuts uh, that were proposed for 50, FT, 50 sworn officers, more or less. So the request of budget was 50, the cut of 50 sworn officers. They currently have, uh, I believe, 30 vacancies in the Bureau of Police. So we will be hiring police officers to fill those vacancies. And again, I will be not taking those cuts. In terms of the firefighters, um, they have uh, no vacancies right now, and this prevents any cuts to filled positions. All stations uh, will remain open. Uh, we continue funding services, again, under uh, health and safety, uh, including the service coordination team, uh, CHEERS, and the Hooper Sobering Station. We continue the funding for the outreach, uh, civilian outreach workers on the Office of Youth Gun uh, Violence. 
Uh, we continue to fund uh, frontline uh, parks and recreation programs. Um, the parks budget and the transportation budget, I'll insert here, um, have been significantly reworked. Uh, there are significant, uh, requested budgets came in with significant cuts to maintenance workers and operations workers. And um, because of where we're at with this process, we can't give you the exact numbers of how many maintenance workers were added back. But uh, for example, in the Bureau of Transportation, we eliminated uh, the, I should say, the maintenance group of the Bureau of Transportation, we eliminated an entire layer of management and use those savings to buy back maintenance workers and street sweeping positions in the Bureau of Transportation. The Parks and Recreation similarly was uh, proposed to close bathrooms and to reduce or eliminate garbage pickup. Um, we reversed those working with the commissioner in charge, uh, took uh, cuts uh, to planning, analysts, uh, management and supervisory positions again to restore those services. Portlanders will see uh, that the grass in our parks will be browner than it has been in the past um, and that our budget for annual flowers might not be as robust but the perennials will be alive and the grass, the green grass will come back with the rain. So there are cuts, these are real cuts but it was important to me that um, that we have uh, more maintenance uh, across these two bureaus and in other bureaus as well. Let's see, so I did education, your prosperous, equitable. Um, this, uh, the Office of Equity, which is a, a recent, the most recent uh, office created in the city of Portland, uh, it, uh, I have not cut that. Uh, it has a carryover of funds from last year. Uh, it is just staffing up and the strategy that is behind that office is just getting off the ground. So uh, that office uh, budget is uh, protected for the time being. Um, I'd like to ask the Chief Administrative Officer to uh, say a few words about um, your uh, thoughts on this process. And um, the Chief Administrative Officer, Jack Graham, is the leader of the Office of Management and Finance as part of his job. And the cuts that he is taking are significant, very deep. And it's those cuts and the resources from those cuts, those central administrative operations, uh, that help backfill what would have otherwise been cuts in sworn officers. Um, as the mayor has stated, this has been a very difficult budget process. Uh, we have to look for cuts in excess of ongoing cuts of $14 million. Um, the cuts to core administrative services functions are substantial. However, I, I feel that it is the right thing to do to cut administration in order to continue to provide direct services to our, our, uh, our citizens. Uh, but as a result, in administration, we're going to have to look at new ways of handling our business. We're going to have to look at ways of looking at our business practices, our business processes. We're going to have to look at ways of leveraging technologies to be able to continue to provide the type of services that the direct bureaus need to provide the services to the public. Uh, while I would like to have not had to cut as deeply, I think that it is the right thing to do, as I, as I previously said.